Collectors, you may know someone that collects, or maybe you're one yourself. The definition of collecting is something that really can't be summed up in just a few words. There's a lot of layers to collecting, and a lot of the time your eyes fool you. There's a lot of layers your eyes just can't see. Collecting differs from one person to the next. Some may collect to remember a special someone, others collect for an investment. In 2015, I met a unique individual that I know we can learn a lot from. But let me explain a couple things first. In 2014, I opened a business that dealt in toys and collectibles, and it is here where I met some of the most interesting and fascinating people, as well as hearing the most outrageous stories. This is where I met Jose Baez, the man I'm gonna talk about today. This is the rise and fall of a collector. I first introduced the world to Jose on my original internet web series called Toy Kings back in 2016. I did the show with my friend Phil and later my cousin Jake would join in. With a six episode run and special lost episode that aired in 2019, this show was about individuals and their collecting habits from normal to extreme. And I would say Jose was closer to the extreme side of things, but not in the way you would think. He didn't have an absurd amount of things. I would even go as far as saying that he had a pretty modest collection, unlike other collections we've seen. Here's a short recap of where we left off with Jose. On this week's episode of The Toy Kings, we sat down with one of my longtime loyal customers, Jose. He's a true New Yorker. Yeah, he is old school. Where do you get doubles? Yes, I always get doubles. You always get multiple, that way you can make money. But you never sell it. But I told my daughter that when I croak, anything that she has, the comic books, sells, has to go to all, all four of my kids. So the last time that we spoke to him, he had said that he possibly is getting evicted. Are you expecting to be get, getting out of here anytime uh, soon? I'm supposed to pay my rent, I haven't been able, so. Well, unfortunately, he did get evicted. He went missing for a while, and I tried tracking him down, contacting family members, um, but apparently, um, but he did show up. He walked into my store. Well, that's good. Yeah, so he's alive. He walked into a bar, which he apparently hadn't been to a bar in forever because he didn't have any money, and he saw a flyer. Someone had posted looking for this guy. And he, and he found two or more flyers that uh, around town that someone had hung up in, like, in the spots where he would go. And to try and find him, I mm. offered him, hey, some like, buy some more of his stuff to give him some money to help him out. Because I paid half of what things are worth. I mean, I'd give him a little bit more just to try and help him. He won't sell it. Ever man, time I met here, you've been always my, uh, consider a friend. All right, I appreciate that. Yes, and I do annoy you, yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah, but you do me too. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my, my job. I'll deal with what I have to. Um, I'll sleep where I have to, my truck, I'm trying to get work, you know? This is one thing I noticed, that most people say, well, you got comic books, just some. I'm like, it ain't gonna be that easy. But I have a tendency to constantly fight that, you know? I'll say, okay, fine, let's see what, I, what else I can do, you know? If it wasn't for comics, I probably would have been dead when I was younger. I already lost one collection. But it's not easy, big guy. It's not. I was able to pay the storage unit with all my stuff. Yeah. It wasn't easy. It wasn't. I already lost one collection that was worth so much money. That collection I lost because uh, uh, I did stuff that I shouldn't and I had to pay for it. This is the second collection that I got. Now I got into a situation that I, I can't get out. Okay, once I got a victim, so first thing I did, because they had all my pills and then my medication, you know, slept in my truck. Next morning, I went over there and said, listen, you guys got my, all my um, medication in there. You guys need to let me get in there and get my stuff out. The young girl there who liked me, you can go into your apartment, get everything. You got like two or three days to get it out. So you got your, your like, your comic books and action figure and stuff out before? Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the first thing I did. I had the money to put it in storage. So after the, the apartment and you were living in your truck, you found a place to live? Um, no, I lived in my truck. 
because um, you know what all I need to do is buy a canopy and I can sleep in the truck on uh, the back or the front I mean the only thing problem with my truck was that my feet were longer than the truck just to deal with my life I would buy some beer and I saw a job connection working and everything then my nephew sh showed up and I was living with him in, in his garage him and his wife did take care of me so if you are um, pretty hurt up I know you say you're trying to hang on to the comic books <laughs> for your kids I, oh I am I but am. maybe there's a time where you're just gonna have to sell it that collection there for my kids is something that took me a long time to get it for them so your plans are eventually to go back to New York oh uh, yeah yeah and I'm bringing your ass too excuse my language boys <laughs> or girls what were your thoughts about your episode that we put out on you the first uh, one uh, Phil and I were out there no it was kind of cool yeah except for the orange shirt <laughs> 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 yeah I was shocked that um people saw it <laughs> hey, what's that supposed to mean <laughs> no it was just that people say hey I saw you on Facebook yeah and I'm like did I do something on Facebook that I should <laughs> um, so yeah it was cool but one thing that I know is that I learn I learn from everything I do I do whatever I have to it's the only thing I got all right well uh, thanks for sitting down and give nah. us a recap what's been going on yeah you people worried about you yeah no I appreciate it man I do appreciate it dude we love going out to see your guys' collections yeah. and stuff. Uh, but also, you know, it can, there there are things that can, it opens our eyes and it opens a lot of the viewers, we think, like to see how deep this can go. And it's yeah. not that you should stop collecting or anything, but you know, sometimes, you know, reevaluate it. People find these connections to inanimate objects on a level that I can't begin to explain. Over the years, I have witnessed countless individuals consume their lives by seeking out and buying objects, and even hoarding these objects on an extreme level. I have seen grown adults arguing over a child's toy, ranging from how to display it to what paint application is better. And to most people, this could be seen as strange. But to the average collector, this is just a normal day. When you hear about people that have a collection of something, it's usually being shown off in a fun way, like on TV, which is awesome. But I mean, after all, these are just toys or comic books or whatever. It should be fun. It's a hobby and hobbies are supposed to be enjoyable, but things are not always as they seem. And to a lot of collectors, this is their life. And it's not being looked at as a possible real issue or maybe for some even becoming disconnected from reality. Now, is Jose this way? In 2017, myself and Phil went out to Jose's storage unit. I got a call from him that he was moving back to New York City and was only allowed to take two small boxes with him and that he had to sell everything else when he wanted me to come out and buy it. I don't know the whole story, but what I do know is that some of his family was helping him by paying for his storage unit because he didn't have a job and they were also helping pay for him to move to New York City, which he was leaving the following day. So we decided to bring a camera because it was going to be the last time we would see him for a while or even possibly forever and we wanted to put it on our show. But when we got there, we quickly knew that this footage was probably not going to see the light of day. I'm about to show you this because I think there's a lesson here and definitely some good can be taken away from it. All right, we got Phil. What's up? Hello. Hi. 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 Remember that time we went to Jose's storage locker? He was what, episode three? I think it was, but he was actually episode one for us because he was the first episode we ever filmed. That was back in 2015, I think it was. He's been down on his luck. He's been uh, evicted from his apartment. He's back out on the street. But he gave me a call yesterday and told me that he is actually moving back to New York he wanted me to come to a storage unit and buy a bunch of his stuff. And as you know, it must be really hard for him because he is not a one to sell his items. He wants to give his stuff to his kids. Now we're going to go and check out what he's got and hopefully I can help him out a bit. We'll be meeting uh, Jason. He is going to probably buy a couple things. He didn't want to step on my toes 
and come buy stuff out from underneath me, but I told him, you know what, dude, it is all good. I'd rather it go to you. I think he's already there. We'll meet him, and uh, we'll see if he even wants to be on camera. But uh, let's check it out, guys. I got that song stuck in my head. What's that panic at the disco? We're going down swinging. Yay, yeah. who bite the bullet? Go around chocolates. Two kids and something, something. Who get it like who get What was your first thoughts when we rolled up there? I noticed that beer is the first thing I noticed. Might have been a little bit intoxicated. Maybe he spilled some beer on himself in the process. Like, Do you remember what time it was? It might have been noon. We could probably check the timestamp on the recording because I'm pretty sure it was like 11. <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh yeah, I forgot to turn on the microphone to, for the first part where we first got there. That is my fault. <laughs> Okay, we got a lot of B-roll in. All right. Famous monster sneak. That's right, baby. Did you get it? <laughs> How much you gonna pay? Those aren't worth anything, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're full of shit. Some of them. What do you think? It's one of a kind. <laughs> There's another one. It's kind of hard to make. There was, like, no cohesive conversation, I don't think. It was hard to get responses out of him. He wasn't making any sense very very much sense it was kind of inaudible a lot of what he was saying what's the other guy that um john or something something like that my cousin no 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 it's the last time i was at your place mm -hmm. that other guy was there what was his name no idea yeah that's because you just weird maybe jordan i think it is oh, okay so when we like left out he actually drove by he said hey i'll you know get you you know over there i said no nah, i'll take a walk and then, and then i called them he was in a convention. That was me. That was this guy. That That's you? Yeah. That was oh, me, shit. That's you? <laughs> <laughs> shit, forget about it, man. I'm done. <laughs> forget about it. You're not going to get the one that uh, I know that's worth money. And remember, it's like a, a lot of money. So this was a very weird uh, day, to say the least. He was just not really that coherent. He didn't know really what was happening. Uh, it was, made things a lot more difficult. So just just being there, it just was... Oh man, that's why I didn't release any of this footage. It was just a sad day. <laughs> it was strange and sad and... It just questioned everything. Like, why? what am I doing? Like, should I even be recording this? Yeah. So what else are you uh, going to go through here? It depends. I got to get... Uh... Because if I don't show up there too early um, on the time, they won't let me go sleep in the bedroom, you know? I mean, the garage and shit, so, uh, so yeah. I asked him what else he had that he wanted to sell. Uh, tell me, because uh, eventually I got to go get, get the fuck out of here. Excuse my language. Stop cursing! So how well, much? I was... Might as well go through all the figures and figure out what you want to sell. Uh, well, you can uh, take that shit. What time you gotta be down there, Jose? Fuck that yeah. shit. Go that. ahead, get, get, get what you want, man. Yeah. But this you're not getting, bro. Actually, you know what? There's no way that I'm gonna be able to take that to New York anyway. Do you know, remember anything that may have happened off camera? I mean, he kept on giving me things and then kind of like taking them back or like not remembering maybe that he gave them to me. like. 20 minutes prior, like, that's kind of confusing. I think he was just in a hard spot and just really needed money. You just gave me that box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> you just said you wanted to sell that box. Yeah, the box, not not like this, man. <laughs> just, okay. He kept going back and forth with what he wanted to sell, and I get that, I mean, this is your prize stuff. 
and you're being forced to sell it when you don't even want to. It's just, it was just a very awkward position that I had to be in. And you may not even know, I don't own the store anymore. I sold it. And part of the reason of selling it was I kept getting put in those positions and I'm just not like, I'm not a shark. I don't go in there and swoop in on when people are down and just like try to rip them off for my personal gain. And it's just, if you want to be successful as a buy sell trade business or of any, of any kind, you kind of have to throw out some morals most of them and try to get things for as low as you possibly can and then sell it for as high as you possibly can and i'm not that way you know i i'm fair as fair as i can i, if I didn't buy any of this stuff this was just going to be sold off to somebody else probably going to undercut everything or worse it probably would have just ended up in the trash and i know a lot of his other personal stuff did end up in the trash uh his family told me they, they threw it away i said at the beginning he did get evicted from his apartment uh, he w was homeless. He was living in his truck uh, that he had and his stuff was in his truck originally and some family members helped him out and got in the storage unit. And then once he got his storage unit, he was paying for the storage unit, but he would find odd jobs and all of his money that he would make would go to pay for that and he would just sleep in his truck. It was just this vicious cycle to keep a habit going. and. At that point, it's just a burden. You know, if you're collecting something where it's controlling your life, there's there's an issue there. There's something that should be addressed. But seriously, if you guys ever want to come to New York, just come. Yeah. And touch base with me. For sure. That'd be fun. Yeah. Never been to New York. Well, it's a whole different world. Don't worry about doing. No, that. I don't. I mean, no, honestly, dude, you're you're a collector, and it's like. The, it's it's I insulting. I am a collector, yes. and I actually lost a lot already. I know, this dude, is but the third time, so. yeah, but the the thing is, is that anything that we could offer realistically, leader, it's fucking insulting. Okay. But I mean, honestly, dude, it, this is I don't even want to talk about it because I don't want to piss you off by telling you that You're not your comics are worth off. nothing. Yeah. I mean, Jose, if I go through any of these and I find a key book that's worth a lot of money, I know no. I will get a hold of you. That's that's the rules. No, 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 no. no I, that's not how I. That's not how I work. Right. It's never good when you're in that position, especially if he spends so much time and effort, and then acquiring everything, and then just having to get rid of it based off circumstance. I don't know if you know this, but that all that stuff that was left ended up just at my store anyway, because his family basically told him he couldn't keep like any of it. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know that, but I mean that's a better place for it than just whatever the storage place would have done yeah, he may have gotten like one box of stuff oh that's too bad i didn't know that the stuff that i ended up with a lot of it was his family like child's like birthday cards and drawings and stuff that he made him but he prioritized his comic books and action figures over that oh well, i did not know that i mean like i'm i'm not too surprised to he when i saw it it was just a little sh like disappointing, you know, because he did pride himself on wanting to get all these comic books and action figures and collectibles and stuff to his kids. However, in the end, he kind of chose the comics and action figures and collectibles, I mean, over his kids. In a way, he didn't bother to keep any of his memories, his family photos and drawings and things that he had gotten that, that a normal family would have. So it, it, it was kind of a it was kind of a sad day you know, all, all around. Do you think that that's a problem or that's just okay? I mean, I don't see that as a surprise. Actually, that like the kind of collector he was, like so that. No, it's kind of funny. I think. I mean, I don't know. I don't have children, so <laughs> maybe it's different for me. But I mean, it's not surprising that that something like that would get prioritized below comics to a collector. No. Exactly. Fuck that Video shit. Take me sitting there. That's right. You know that shit. <laughs> Chris, I love you, man. I do. I, I, I take stuff, man, okay? Guy, come at it. Come at it, okay? I'll see you in the morning, right? He leaves for New York tomorrow, the next day. And uh, he's, he, he's not all there right now. And... He thinks that we're going to see him tomorrow, but he just wasn't making any sense at all. And it probably was due to the fact that, I mean, he was, he was drunk. <laughs> he was, he'd been drinking. Uh, who knows when he started, but this was 8 AM in the morning when we were doing this. Maybe that has something to do with it. You want to show him this stuff? 
What? I'm joking. Okay. I'm out of here, bro. All right, well, in case we don't see you again. No, I'll see you tomorrow, man. Okay. So, yeah, I uh, bought a bunch of stuff from him, gave him quite a bit of money. <laughs> I wanted to help him out. I felt really bad for him and uh, pay a little bit more than I probably should have. But, again, I, I wanted to help him out. I don't remember how much I ended up giving, but it was about two car loads. One of the car loads was just comic books, and the second car load was just random boxes of action figures. But what happened next was kind of interesting. I don't really know all the details of the reasoning that he had to get out of there and move to New York, but so the family members that were helping him having to deal with all the leftover stuff that he didn't take. So all that stuff ended up at my store. They were just going to drop this stuff off at the store and just say, be here, take it. We're done with it. We had to clear out that storage unit, just have it. But I'm, I'm not that way. I asked them, the guy give, guy give you something for it. And they said, we're, we're back a few months on payments for that storage unit. If you could just give us that at least, that'd be awesome. So, so that's what I did. But what I found inside the stuff, one of the boxes that uh, was supposed to be actually thrown in the trash uh, because a lot of his leftover things, personal items, they just threw away. And like the comic book stuff and action figures type things were taken to my store. But one of the boxes was uh, some personal stuff that they had missed. So when I opened the box, things fell out. All these papers were just all over the floor. And as I was picking things up, I noticed a lot of the stuff was actually like letters and stuff that his kids had written to him uh, and like birthday cards and family photos. It was kind of an interesting feeling like he prioritizes the, his comic books and action figures over that type of thing. And I don't know, it's kind of left a weird taste in my mouth. And I, as I was packing it all up, uh, I, had, I had found some <laughs> Uh, interesting things about his past that I won't share here, but he had a very shady past when he was a little bit younger and got himself in trouble with the law. And he did, you know, did his time and now he was out. And I always felt that there was something about him that was different than everybody else, that he was trying to make up for something that he had done, or he was just trying to find redemption. And after knowing him and seeing that, it made a little more sense as to who he was. And so it's kind of put some puzzle pieces together because I've known this guy for five years at this point. He's always, he always treated me well. I never had any problems with him. <laughs> I mean, he was a pain in the butt when he would come into my store. Uh, he was very loud and obnoxious and customers didn't really appreciate him that much, but uh, he, was, he, he was a good dude. We'll have to make a trip down there or over there seriously, at some point. I'm not, seriously, just check up on you. Keep on with me, yeah. Cause I guarantee you, man, I'll show you stuff in New York that you might not want to come back, especially with the girls. Summer, <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> All right, we'll see, we'll see yeah. you later, Jose. All right, you got it, man. I uh, I wanted to give you a call here and ask you a couple questions, but since you were kind of a part of that, I really wanted to get your thought of what happened that day exactly, and this kind of what was going through your brain a little bit. That day. Um, the, the thing was, is I'd met, I'd met Jose at the shop a couple of times. And I, you had talked a couple of times about how he was a bit much for some customers. And um, it, he never bothered me, if, if that's the word you can use. I just always thought he was like super gregarious and just turned up to 11. I, I kind of <laughs> thought that was his natural volume of life, right? Yeah. He was, that's who he was, you know? and it. I always liked him at the shop, especially because there was zero filter on the guy. <laughs> yeah. He just, he was who he was. And I, I just found that refreshing and, and frankly, kind of wonderful that, that somebody could be that just, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Um, so I, I was always kind of impressed with that. The actual day is weird because I rewatched the footage of that day that you'd yeah. sent. And I remember being, it was so awkward. Um, and he was about nine sheets to the wind at about 9.30 in the morning. Yeah. And I was instantly uncomfortable with that because you know we were negotiating to buy things with somebody who I wasn't entirely sure was cogent enough to be making those decisions. Right. Why are we here? What's happening? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was all, all around really odd. I think this is tying in with you talking about him having the beer all over the floor and he didn't care. He was setting his stuff in the beer. Yeah, he was. 
it's like he, he had this stuff that had actually did have a value to it. And he was not treating it with any level of respect at all. He kept moving it and throwing it around on other boxes. And you remember I kept grabbing it and moving it to other places to try and keep it safe because yeah. he was so destructive in what he was doing that day. He was throwing boxes around. He was chucking toys around. He'd pull out, he'd pull out a comic book and he would tell you, this is worth 50 bucks. And he would fling it onto the ground, like, like Frisbee it. Um, and so I was just trying to keep the stuff away from him. He put it in his mouth and was biting it to hold on to it while he was shuffling through other stuff. And I, I remember just looking at it going, this is, this is unreal. It was a real look into, into his mind. I kind of don't know what to think. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't know what you're showing me. So. Right here. This, this part right here. Just seeing you guys. Yeah. All right. I'll see you, man. Those were the last moments. The last thing you ever like said or even saw of Jose. Oh, I know. That, that was it. I mean, yeah, that was the last time we saw him before he left, and I haven't really heard much or, like, talked to him much after since, so. Like, did you give him, like, a hug? What was it, like, a half hug, or? It was, I think, a handshake and a, a hug, yeah. I told him farewells, pretty much. As I'm editing this footage, it's kind of eerie a little bit, because, for me, that, this was the last time I ever saw yeah, him. This was and this was probably the last footage of him to ever exist because he passed away yeah, I, not too long after this. I know we never really talked about it either. You just mentioned it and I, was, I didn't know what to think. It's just like, it's sad and unfortunate. And it's... Of all the people we had on our show, it was a little interesting that we kept focusing on this guy. <laughs> it's just such a weird, just, he was just so interesting. Like, yeah. I, he had, what, I, like, had a baseball bat when we first met him. When we, you know, <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. And then... Yeah, I just thought it was an interesting thing. Like we were probably the last ones to really document anything it was unfortunately a weird experience i've always felt like he was a man on re like on redemption because he had a very shady past and i learned about it when i got that stuff from him yeah and i found out a lot of like what he had done i don't hold people's past against them especially if it happens before i met them oh, i like sure. to give people a clean slate it's just that's what i was saying like ever since i've done him and now knowing some of the stuff that he had done it's like he's he was been a man on redemption trying to make up for everything and be just a nice like respectful yeah, guy I mean, po buddy's nerfing <laughs> what do you think about him uh, the way he prioritized things okay you know we've all watched the show hoarders um so really it wasn't surprising how he would prioritize things let's not ever forget the day when we were doing that and he was talking about taking two short boxes of comic books with him to, to New York on an airplane instead of clothing. Remember, he got yeah. two carry-ons or two check bags and he wanted to take two short boxes of comic books with him. That's what he wanted to take. Just the clothes on his back and his comic books. It was so strange. It just seemed to me like this is where you guys could all end up if you're not real, real, real careful. Do you believe or do you think that Jose has some sort of illness? But that's just hiding the, behind the fact that he was trying to give his collection to his kids, but he's really just a collector himself. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was, I mean, again, speak no ill of the dead, but there's also a level of, you're not going to get through this episode without somebody being a little bit of a jerk, so I'll go ahead and do it. I've got nothing to lose. That stuff was never going to go to his kids, ever. If his point and goal was to give that money to his kids, he would have sold it all and put it in a CD, you know? or yeah. sold it all and, and bought stuff that actually had some chance of being worth something someday. But no, he was that stuff was never gonna get sold to his kids. That was the fiction he was telling himself to allow him to keep hoarding that stuff to the detriment of everything else. He was sleeping in his truck, mm -hmm. right? Yes. With the storage unit full of useless toys. And he was able to tell himself that was okay because I'm doing this to give all these to my kids later. He's like come up with his own justification for his collecting habit. We can really go to the tail end of that and we know the stuff that he abandoned yeah. in his storage unit and it was the stuff that was personal memories from his children to him. And he said, you know, in his mind, he had to say, I don't want that stuff. I want these useless Todd McFarlane 1990s comic books. People get consumed and without even realizing what's happening. 
And so I'm hoping with this project that I'm doing now is like, I can wake up their eyes a little bit to where maybe they see that they have something like they got a problem or they're like, hey, I don't, you know, I'm actually doing okay. <laughs> this isn't something that's bad. And there's no like real right or wrong answer to what people decide what, what's worth to them. However, when it, there may come a point where if you're putting value on something over human life, essentially, that could potentially cross a line and maybe you should, you know, reevaluate a couple of things. Because my thing is always with, with all this stuff around me, I don't care about it. If it starts burning up, you know, I'm going to grab my, my wife and then my cats and then my dog and this stuff can burn. I don't care. But you got some of these guys with, I really genuinely feel if the house caught on fire, they'd leave their kids and they'd grab their Star Wars Boba Fett. I don't think that this collecting thing is very healthy. No. I just don't think it is. And I, I think it's not because I look at guys like Jose and I just think that there's and it's sad that he's passed away yeah. because he was whatever problems he'd had earlier in his life you got to admit he was he was a genuine guy i just think there's so much other stuff he could have devoted his life and time and money to he says in front of books but um <laughs> i know it's just you can't talk about hypocrisy but i'm just not sure that this whole collecting thing is healthy i think it it puts the it puts all your internal energy on external items. But then you, then you gotta switch that around. You can look at somebody like Jose, who's putting his time, energy, and emotional effort into doing everything he can to keep that stuff. I think all of us collectors, me included with my books, I think we're all missing out on some serious other amazing life stuff. We're not all gonna end up like Jose. I don't know, I'm not sure we should be doing this. Why do you, why do you think people collect then? You collect to fill a void. I know that's why I do it. To me, I, I do this because of a mental illness. I don't share this with everybody, but I'll just share it with the entire world because I don't care and it might help your thing. You know, I have post-traumatic stress disorder from service in the military. And I know, I know that I collect because of that mental disorder. Um, I don't have to interact with the world. I can come in here and I can close off. And I think that's what people do. I think you surround your entire life with Gundams and that's your life. You don't have to deal with the rest of the world because you can come back to your Gundams and not process the emotions that are going through your mind. You can close it off. You can stop. Or I have all 93 original Star Wars action figures all on card AFA 9.0. Aren't I cool? No. No, you're not. You're a guy who has a bunch of toys. You're not cool. You didn't cure cancer. You didn't do anything with your life. And again, that's harsh. It's horrible to say. It's mean. It's judgmental. But come on. I mean, really? You know, I... What's that word? It doesn't last. Okay? I would much rather have never had any of this stuff and saved all that money and been able to go to the South Pole. Because guess what? When I'm on my deathbed um, or close to it, I'm not going to look back on my life and remember when I got an AFA graded Jawa. You know, I'm gonna look back on that time that I climbed Mount St. Helens and oh my gosh, wasn't that an amazing day? Or the time I went out on the ocean and watched a whale. So I had I had a really close friend of mine recently, a uh, guy I looked up to, he was a mentor, really, uh, end our entire relationship be based off of something that was materialistic. And so it's interesting to hear in, like get other people's perspectives on what you, like what you just said, like it doesn't matter in the end. And that's a prime example of what I tell people too. Like you can have a billion dollars in the bank. You could have 14 cars, yachts, skyscrapers, whatever. It literally means absolutely nothing when you're dying on your bed and there's not a single person standing next to you. And there's nobody there. You're not gonna care about what you have. You're, there's nobody here to hold my hand while I go. Chris, that's it. I agree with you completely. And I think that's what my giant rant that meant nothing at the end meant is that you're, I think this collecting thing, you're getting this sense of accomplishment from stuff that isn't, you know what I mean? You're creating a sense of accomplishment from buying something mm -hmm. instead of building a human relationship or shoring up a human relationship, right? To have that person there when you're ready to kick out yeah. or to have someone care about you when you're gone. I'm trying to do my best not to make fun of or judge anybody and anything that I like make or produce film wise. I just want to document incidences and tell stories of people's lives, good and bad. And 
you kind of have to walk that line to be able to share a, a, a good story. You kind of have to walk that line. It's very fine and I try not to cross it. So hopefully I didn't cross it in making this, <laughs> this video because it was, it's easily done. I did push it a little bit, but I really wanted to show who he is. This is who he was. But I don't want to come across as somebody that I'm trying to make, make fun of him or judge him on his life decisions or whatnot. But there's a lot of things that you can learn from seeing other people at their, you know, honestly, probably their worst. I'm not saying this is Jose's worst, but uh, if you see somebody that is gone through a lot of bad things, there's something that you can learn from it. And I think Jose is a good example of some decisions that, you know, can be made small or large. Uh, that's really up to your discretion. But I know for me, it makes me really appreciate some of the things that I had done and realized, you know what, maybe it wasn't so bad. <laughs> and it makes me feel good about the stuff I collect that I'm not consumed with it where it controls my life. And then unfortunately with Jose, it's, it kind of, it's kind of an obsession and this does control his life. This is really what dictates it. The day that we did all that stuff, this is the page that I bought from him and I will never sell this. You know, this was Jose's and he kept it for 40 years, probably 30 years. Yeah. It made it through all that with him. And I also keep it. There's another reason I keep this around very prominently displayed on the walls. It's because it reminds me that none of this stuff is very important and I don't ever want to end up like Jose. Yeah. And then in a pinch, I will sell all of this stuff. If I have to, there is nothing in this house that I will not get rid of to help my family, friends, whatever I need to do. So you said earlier in the year, uh, Spider-Man saved your life. Yes, he did. What happened with that? What I got from it as a young kid, I got that, you know, you hope, you try to hope people you can. You be pol polite to people, you know. Um, it did save my life, it did. I could have turned into, well, kind of did that anyway. So I could have turned into an ugly F individual, you know. But uh, Spider-Man, my whole team up, they gave me the energy to deal with a lot of the bullshit, you know. Ever since, it actually helped me a lot. It also kind of show me what people should do, not what they want to do. Making this project has definitely been a difficult one on a few levels. Just the thought of not really knowing at the time that it was going to be the last time I would see or even talk to Jose. I mean, yeah, he was kind of a pain. Like he would come into my store and he would just be the rowdiest person. And I know other customers probably didn't appreciate it too much, but people like that are usually the people that you want to stick around. They make life more interesting and definitely more enjoyable. It just goes to show that life's short and you should appreciate the people around you and prioritize things that really matter whatever it may be. Jose, you are definitely going to be missed. I hope that by sharing just a little bit of your story with the world, that it inspires someone and maybe even helps them. Thank you so much for the memories. I'm, uh, I'm definitely not going to forget about you, buddy. I wish I had a beer. I would pour it out on your rug. It's fun for Jose. Yeah. Pour one out for Jose. So like, like I've been saying multiple times already in, in this video, I'll, I'll say it one last time. I was really hoping to achieve some sort of goal of people to really look within themselves, but also bring a lot more awareness of what people don't normally see or hear about because you see stuff on TV, you hear you know, stuff on the radio or wherever, I mean radio, more like podcasts nowadays, uh, about toys and collectibles or just objects, things that people collect and it's always fun and great and we always be like that's amazing, let's, let's go check it out and or encourage it when maybe there's an actually a real issue and so I'm going to be making this a lot bigger project and this is kind of the stepping stone to bring awareness 
to this uh, documentary that I'm going to be working on next, where it's about people's collections, but not really. It's really focused on the individual and getting inside their head. Uh, and, and I'm calling it the collector's mind and just getting in there, asking them why, hearing their thoughts. It's a good stepping stone too, because th this is an extreme example of someone who was willing to sacrifice all of his interactions and, and physical remembrances of his own family for, you know, some stuff that had no intrinsic value whatsoever. Yeah. But was more important to him than it was to any other living human being on the planet. They'd be proud. We made it. We saw the city. We did. We made it here. We made it to New York finally. Too bad Jose's not here to share with us. It's Jose's birthday today. Oh, I did not know. We're here. We're leaving, but we're still kind of here on his birthday. Isn't that crazy? That's like, man, you can't make that crap up. <laughs> I did not know that. It's crazy. And five years ago, Rob, last sir, week, we shot his first episode. That was five years ago? <laughs> yeah. Like, we were here during all of this. It's so crazy. Yeah. I guess the stars are aligned. It's crazy. A good friend of mine once said, do what you should do, not what you want to do.